Hi guys and welcome to the Camera Rescue Basic course. In the very beginning I want to address a certain issue before we go deeper into condition ratings and condition testing and pricing and everything that is involved in the camera rescue process. I want to address a single issue. Nico is here with me to help address this issue, uh, give some insights on what his personal uh, kind of uh, experiences with these are and then we are ready to go. Okay, so this is titled why 90% of a camera's value is in its condition. And I don't mean physical condition because here we have two Bronicas and physically they are pretty much the same. But the other one is worth nothing and the other one is worth, I don't know, 1,500 euros or whatever it's worth nowadays. Uh, and that is because this one is broken. Uh, and you might say that, well, okay, that's 90% that's is quite rough, but we'll get uh, later to that. Uh, before that, I, I wanted to showcase some of the books. So here's an, one book, it's the Hove International Blue Book, and here is the actual Bible. McKeon Cameras, 12th edition, the last edition, which has all kinds of cameras um, on, on display. It's a collector's book, and essentially it has uh, historical um, values for cameras, and this is the latest edition in 2006. And the biggest reason why condition is the main key for pricing a camera is that the market has totally changed since 2006. Obviously digital came, but in addition to that, there is a new wave of photographers who want to shoot film for shooting film, for getting the results that they are looking. So they're looking for usable cameras. And this kind of collection era, it kind of died out with the internet when uh, all of a sudden you could find any camera in the world and it, was, it wasn't kind of a treasure hunt like it used to be before the internet where you went to events and you had a list that you're looking uh, for. It, it just became a, a thing of who has the biggest pockets to make the biggest collection. Uh, so there's almost no collectors left that are collecting. Uh, so the historical cameras mainly have an ornamental value. It, that's, that's kind of their, their value. What does an antique shop pay for, uh, for it as a decoration? Uh, and obviously they also have a historical value for the photographic community, uh, but there's so much of those old cameras that most of them are not worth uh, pretty much anything. So now we go back to the user cameras. If they, those are the ones that people are looking for, why is there such a big gap, 90%? Well, 90% is mainly because there is such a hard time finding repair options uh, in 2020. At least in Europe, it's, there's only very few places that are reputable uh, to repair a camera. Most countries have, have almost none in Europe. I think the situation in the US and especially in Japan is much better, but uh, they, they are also expensive. So when you have a broken camera, you have essentially three options uh, what to do with it. And uh, now we're gonna go through them with Nico. Uh, the first one is do it yourself. Um, you try to fix the problem yourself. And uh, do you have any? Yeah, I've, I bought a Hasselblad which had a problem and tried to fix it myself and actually ended up with a bag of Hasselblad parts that make a Hasselblad if you know how to put the puzzle back together. But yeah, when you are buying something and you think you can fix it, usually doing it yourself unless you're very talented, shouldn't go past the light seals or minor cleaning a couple of things here and there. Yeah, like if you're lucky in something you can take off the top off and there's only a little 
thing that you see, clearly see and then you tighten it and then you put it back like uh, I think Willem had a video on, on YouTube on, on that. Uh, but mostly uh, if we, we're talking of actual repairs, not maintenance, not light seals, not little fixes, we are talking about actual repairs. The learning curve uh, for a do-it-yourself guy is such a long learning curve that uh, it won't, like, uh, at least it, it might be a nice hobby and you could spend two weeks on one camera to make it work and uh, you can treat it as a hobby, but it's not the option of the masses. Uh, the next option is a self-taught repairman. Uh, these are starting to pop up because there is so much demand all over Europe at least. And there, there's some problems uh, in these uh, guys. Uh, first, of them, first of all is that uh, when you give them a camera, it's, in m most cases it's the first time they are actually opening that camera. And you can imagine if you're doing something for the first time, it's not, uh, I would say like, <laughs> I wouldn't, yeah. Uh, then the second uh, thing is that do they actually have the machinery to test that their fix is actually a fix? Uh, do they have the testing machinery to make sure that once they fix a camera, it's an accurate camera, the shutter speed is are accurate, the light meter is accurate. Because most of these guys don't have this repair uh, or this machinery because even us, we are running low on them. We, would look, we are looking and hunting them all around Europe and still we're run, running uh, low on them. And uh, it's, it would be a miracle if someone finds them without us finding them first. And then the third question is, are, are their practices sustainable? Because at least if you look at YouTube and the tutorials there are on YouTube to fix cameras, most of them actually make camera makers get gray hair. They do not they, like actual camera makers who have the actual training, they, they get so so annoyed at seeing YouTube videos because there's all kinds of uh, essential like I, I've seen a TLR video where you just take off the front element of the TLR you spray some oil into the shutter mechanism to make it work again because TLR uh, oil uh, like the shutters stick so that was the fix official fix on YouTube which meant that once the oil starts to move uh, into the whole camera, it will just make everything oily. Uh, it will work for a year, but after that, you don't even have the spare part value left because everything is oily and it's either ruined or it's a big hassle to take everything apart and clean them one by one and put them back together. So self-taught repairmen are a risk. There are a few good ones, hopefully, so, so just be aware. Have you ever used one? No, I've never tried self-taught. I've tried myself with big failures and I've tried proper branding or proper brand uh, repairs that have been good, but the prices are always something to consider because sometimes the value of the item can be lower than the repair cost. Yeah. And that brings us to the option three. You find the proper repair shop with someone hopefully taught by the factory of that brand that you have the camera you want to fix and you, you send the camera there. Uh, it's uh, probably in most cases you're sending it to a foreign country, even to a foreign continent. Uh, so it's gonna cost you quite a lot of money. Uh, the second problem is that most of these shops are queued. There's a long queue of weeks or months or in some cases even, even years. So that's uh, always a risk. And then the third part, the third thing that affects all these three is that if the, bro the, the repair needs a spare part that is not available, then it's not available. That, that is, you know, you can maybe find a donor camera, but in most cases, uh, they are the same parts that break uh, constantly in a certain camera model. So even having a donor won't uh, always help. So 
in that case you have a camera that is only worth the spare part value uh, of the camera. So uh, we're going later in the videos into condition checking on how to check condition on, ca on a camera and I wanted to just uh, take this uh, opportunity to remind you that if you do not know the condition of a camera, you wa might want to treat it as broken or as spare part value because otherwise it's uh, it's a high risk to buy. Yeah. yeah, it's a high risk to buy and this is the like reason because repairs are getting so hard and spare parts are getting so hard to find and collect collection value is is not a real thing in 2020 anymore. But let's move on to the later videos. See you later. Thanks.